Jesus came to forgive all things of flesh, all things done in the flesh, he came to forgive that, that we may go forward of the Spirit. These deeds of the flesh will pass away. Certainly the bad deeds of the flesh will pass away. It will be non-existent. What will exist are those deeds of Spirit. Deeds of Spirit are eternal. Everything else is temporary and it will pass away. Just like judgment. Why would I judge another person when I know the flesh? There's no good thing in the flesh. The scriptures say there's no good thing in the flesh. The flesh is just like an animal. It seeks to serve itself and everything else. So if a person does something in the flesh because they're not yet spirit, see, because with the Lord, you have to be born again of the spirit, correct? In the Bible, Paul said you are no longer flesh, but spirit. That means we're not being ruled by our flesh anymore. We don't do what we do because of the flesh. We do what we do because of spirit. Spirit is Christ, all things of the kingdom. Flesh, all things of the world. So we're not living our lives to feed the flesh anymore. We're not living our lives to go have a good time at a baseball game. We're not living our lives to have, a, you know, the latest clothing. That's not where we're living our lives. We're living our lives to be pleasing unto the Lord. That's spiritual. All these things of flesh, got away with. You are no longer flesh. So in judgment, if somebody else does something to me, I instantly know they did it of the flesh. And I expect flesh to do things like that. So easy for me to forgive anybody because in truth, I know that if somebody does something rotten, they did not do that of the spirit. They did it of the flesh. And the flesh is what? Dead. That's why Jesus said, I came that you may have life and I have life more abundantly. Jesus said that we were abiding in death. We were children of wrath, but because of him being born again of the spirit with a brand new set of desires, we are alive in Christ. So somebody does something to me, they didn't do it of spirit, they did it of flesh. And if there's no good in the flesh, then how can I hold a grudge? All these things anybody did to me in my past, they did some evil thing to me by way of the flesh. But the spirit of that person is something different. No doubt we, all of us, did something to somebody else that was evil, that we shouldn't have done, that impacted them in a negative way. And we did that in the what? The flesh. But when you're born again of the Spirit, you begin to operate by love and by truth, by sobriety. Of the flesh, we were drunken with the world, saturated with the ways of the world. We laughed and joked and made fun of people. Some people did that. Talking about people and everything else. But of the Spirit, you're concerned about the kingdom of the living God. Consequently, that's why you have to be born again. Now, the flesh is already guilty. So, in this new point, in this new day, in this new starting point, don't waste your time being angry at something that's already condemned the flesh but look forward to those things of the spirit there are people on this earth that do not have the spirit you have the bible says that all who jesus said all who come to me the father hath given me right so if you believe in christ your spirit is from the living god to be given to christ that means your father in heaven is truly the father of jesus that means you do have a heavenly family but there are those on the earth and they are quite real. They do not come from the Father. You know what they come from? We, we spoke about what they come from last night. They come from uh, unholy marriage between human beings and rebellious angels. That's what they come from. Are they real spirits? I'm going to give an example of this. There are individuals in the world, and this is distasteful, but I'm, I'm telling you right now. There are individuals in the world that think there's nothing wrong with sodomy. There are individuals in this world, they really believe there's nothing wrong with what God calls an abomination. They have no conviction behind it. Now, the funny thing is, they speak about the same things we do, but they think there's nothing wrong with those areas like sodomy and violence and vengeance and all these things. They feel there's nothing wrong with it. They feel there's nothing wrong with shaming somebody else. They feel there's nothing wrong with throwing people under the bus, this, that, and the other. You're not going to make them see it because they are of a different spirit. They are in great numbers. You may not know them like other folks know them. In fact, I can tell you right now, there are, there are, there are leaders who are terrified of them. If you're not covered by the blood of the Lamb, you're a minnow in a great sea a piranha is what you are. They have no problem destroying another person in every way imaginable. You can understand that. How do they come about, you may ask? Oh boy. You guys know there are secret societies. And I've gone over this once, but I didn't go over the second part. There are secret societies that exist. Even in colleges, many of you guys unknowingly, and it was probably innocent, but you were part of a fraternity. 
And um, it's something you'll take an oath to, something that you follow in uh, line with or in suit with. And you become part of this group, part of this group that has, that operates by the idea of some sort of elitism, a, a mindset of elitism. But there are other societies like Skull and Bones. Now, what is Skull and Bones? Skull and Bones is a society where they teach people, and you have to be of a, a special type person for the, that group, but they teach people how to govern others, how to utilize leadership, not learn leadership, but utilize leadership. These individuals of an unholy union are very, very different. They come about because you have folks who have secret ceremonies. They prepare first a male and a female to carry an unholy child. The male and the female are indoctrinated into secret societies and they cohabitate. They don't have one spirit. They willingly invite a demon into their lives. So they, the parents are operating with these demons in their lives so they have a duality. These ceremonies are set up for that reason so that when they have a child, the child may be dedicated to large figures, stone figures they have all around the world, monument to these things. But when the child is born during a ceremony, they do something. In other words, conception, the child is conceived out of a ceremony. You wouldn't believe the fullness of that ceremony. When a kid is born in one of these secret societies, that newborn child is not like any other newborn child. It is very different. Things happen when that child is born. Supernatural things always happen. Supernatural things always happen during the indoctrination. Supernatural things happen during the ceremony where they conceive. They get a child ready to house a full spirit of one of these ancient ones. Now they have instructions also. They must keep these bloodlines going because at a certain point, some of the old ones will directly be in some of these children. And then when those children take leadership over the world, then the appointed one comes and is coming through their prepared bloodline. So first, right now what you have is you have a bunch of folks in the world, all around the world. They're everywhere. They're in your grocery stores. They, Some of them are your neighbors. They are appointed zones all over the earth. And believe me, they work. They communicate. They work. They communicate. They do things. They cause things. They corrupt things. They, they're doing what they do on purpose. It's coordinated. And these are the some of the children who are now born with the spirits of things that are not like you. You could call them hybrids, and they're walking all around the earth. They're just not, you know, the glamorized hybrids that you would think um, that you see in the movies. Forget Hollywood. That stuff doesn't work. We're talking about something real, right? Something all flesh is not the same. There's also strange flesh, and that's what we're dealing with now, something called strange flesh. Man has one type flesh. Fish have another type flesh. Birds another. This is strange flesh. The same flesh that was spoken about Sodom and Gomorrah when Jesus said, or when one of the prophets said they've gone after strange flesh. God said this through a prophet over and over. They've gone after strange flesh. That means not human. That means not animal. That means something else. They went after strange flesh. We have the same issue today. And it's not fake. It's real. They're children running around of strange flesh. And when I say strange, I mean strange. But they're being born all over the place. And they have been, they've been on this earth for a long time now. They're extremely intelligent. They are not stupid. They don't have an ability to discern things like simple things they don't have an ability to do. It's almost like a big uh, um, gap of knowledge is missing from them when it comes to things that we can do. Like we can discern when we need to react in, in certain types of situations without anybody telling us because it's almost like a, a heart language that we have that they're missing. We can only go so far when we get angry. They can go all the way without even shedding a tear. They're very different. They're also embedded among believers. I'm going to name something to you. You may have a friend or, or, or whatever the case may be. And you may, may be having a really good moment of growth with the Lord. All of a sudden, every time you get to a certain specific point spiritually, one of them is prompted to interrupt that thing. First, you'll get it by simple spirits operating through people. Somebody gives you a call. They're not doing so well. They're angry at somebody. And so they start expressing what they're angry about. Messing up the atmosphere you have just 
set in your home. So whatever the case may be, spiritually, they come first. Well, if that doesn't work, then they do things with coordinated effort by way of situations. And if that doesn't work, you're going to get the real deal. And they keep coming like this until they disrupt your life so that you cannot maintain love, so that you feel betrayed, that you don't trust love. Because if they can ever get you not to trust love, they know you're going to break friendships and you're going to break relationships with those who love the Lord and you're going to adopt other company in which case they can corrupt you and get you back into that life of sin again to sin against your father in heaven to learn to hate the Lord spiritually there are things assigned to you and they attempt to counteract everything of you but these folks are very different they are preordained like the Bible says to be ungodly so they try and try and try they can only mingle for so long and then they have to go away do you ever have a friend or anything with christianity but they have large gaps in their fellowship like they can only tolerate this they can only tolerate this for a couple days they have to go away and then they come back let me give an example of this you guys all of you know what i'm about to say in your personal lives you have gone some hours devoted to the lord all of a sudden a desire comes into you that is so strong and you have to go sin something that's causing you to go sin well you try to fight it but the desire is so strong so nagging you say well let me do this and then after i do this you know it'll be out of my system i can do so and so whatever the case may be you go and do that thing and when you do it instantly you feel like you failed anybody know what i'm talking about you feel like you've been set back a thousand steps it would be like you reading the Bible. You say, I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to be in prayer all day. All of a sudden you do that. But then after you complete that, you're setting a strong desire of sin enters into you. Like something is pulling you to do something you know you shouldn't do. And so you fight with it. Fight with it. All of a sudden you find yourself losing. And you're drawn into that sin. And once you do it, you feel like you have failed the great failing of all failures. Now, did you notice how strong that desire was within you? Did you notice that nobody had anything to do with that desire, but that it spiritually manifested itself in you? That was your flesh fighting back. That was your flesh saying, you're not going to maintain this holiness. And it would fight back your flesh, your sheer flesh. That's just your natural flesh rising up within you. Well, guess what? If there come a day that you overcome that, because that was influenced by darkness, then you're going to get another wave. A coordinated effort against you to cause you to give way to your desires of sin so it first will come by way of your flesh it's a mental struggle when you do that if you happen to get over that it's going to manifest in situations if you happen to get over that it's going to manifest in other ways ultimately you're going to encounter strange flesh that strange flesh could be for men it could be a female that comes out of nowhere that will corrupt everything about you. For you ladies, it could be a male that will come and corrupt everything about you, especially in this day and age. It could come by way of a dream, and you'll think it's a dream, but it will be a full manifestation of flesh being who is dotting in and out of existence, it seems. That will seduce you. Oh, it's very real. So I can tell you the stories that you wouldn't dare tell anybody else but that most of you have had these experiences I did, you know we could talk about that but we dare not go down that alley and what I'm telling you is that these things are out there these are the ones who are among you that have no inheritance they're not joint heirs with Christ there are even some who don the, the holy robes of a bishop but they're not like you and I they are here to go against everything that is light and they are everywhere Listen, when you get involved in politics, you, most people have no idea what they're doing. What they root for, whether it be Democratic or Republican, you have no idea. I can tell you this, if it's not God's kingdom, you're going to find them. They keep people at war with one another. They teach war. They're experts at war. They teach people how to kill people. That's why there's a point in the Bible that says that men will learn war no more. These things are everywhere. And they're interacting with you probably even this day you've interacted with some and there's no way you're going to know that you have interacted with them but make no mistake they are here to seduce you and they have been here to seduce you it's just now their plan is again is to have these hybrids on the earth and from these hybrids something like a pure blood will be manifest in this earth that will be mankind's end 
But see, we're sent here to this earth. You you just didn't listen. You can't make a mistake thinking that somehow you were accidentally born here. Nope, you were sent here. You were sent here in this earth. If you're a hundred years old, you've been sent here to this earth. You've been sent here to disrupt all things of darkness. You've been sent here because these things have your brothers and sisters captive. These things are trying to destroy right now actively young minds in the world. These are the people like these, some of these slave traders in this day and age, 2020, who will sell your sons and daughters into slavery right now. And they have no conviction behind doing it. They will snatch your kids and put them into slavery. And those children will go through torment. They're the ones, they don't care. They're not going to cry about what they're doing. They're not going to all of a sudden have a, 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 a stroke of conscience. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron prior to them being born. And just as you have faith in Christ, so do they have faith in what they're doing. And just as you believe in Christ, so do they serve what has been before them. See, we operate by faith. They don't. They operate because things manifest to them. They have proof behind what they're doing. We don't have proof because we operate by faith. But we're also vessels of light, and light destroys darkness. They're the ones turning church into a business by erecting copycat churches that have nothing to do with Christ. Nothing to do with Christ. It's almost like they don't want to mention Christ. They don't want to mention forgiveness. They don't want to mention the rich. They never mention the rich. They pervert things. They are murderers. They still have never stopped trying to kill Christ. Well, I tell you what, they're not going to kill it in me, ever. They're trying to kill the gospel going forward to anybody. They're the ones that position themselves. With most organizations out there, they try to get in so they can shut them down. You know how it works. You threaten to cut all funding where somebody can operate. All of a sudden, the message changes. You get somebody in that organization that's one of them, and they start practicing dark deeds behind corners, and all of a sudden, you can't expose that person because the whole organization falls. Thus, they stay there and pollute the organization from the inside out. Oh, yes. Oh, they have some wicked ways to understand what you're dealing with. You should know the, 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 some of the limits of your flesh and the desires of your flesh. That's normal to them. The message of salvation is foolishness to them. The message of the cross is foolishness to them. And they teach other folks that same stuff. And they're everywhere. They're very smart and crafty. So they use intellect and their money to change us, to lure us into a different type of gospel. A gospel that the apostles never gave. A gospel that Jesus never practiced. And they're multiplying in number like you wouldn't believe. And the more they multiply, the more supernatural this world is going to become. That's why you see the, the average person right now is used to demons and goblins and ghosts and all these other things are out there hunting ghosts and doing everything else. They're parading the spiritual realm, but of the wrong spiritual things. They have different methods. There was a guy, I actually saw this. He was on television cursing up a storm, and then he cast out a demon in the name of Jesus, only to follow up successfully, I guess, casting out the demon, and then cursing and laughing and, and doing all this stuff afterward. Man is being seduced. Man's concepts are being rearranged. Spirits you cannot see. So if you think a method works in casting out a demon, then people are going to replicate that too. And that's why I stay away from all these rules and regulations with spirits. You know why? You can't see a spirit. And I know the act of seduction that's running rampant all throughout the earth. If a person comes in and practices a certain method against a demon to get it out of a person, and it looks like that person succeeded, I know that people are going to accept that as truth. But what's really going on is that person who's going by these rules and regulations, that person of pride. And if they successfully cast out a demon, the demon didn't go anywhere. The demon goes silent to make the person who's doing all the rules stuff look like his stuff worked to deceive people and have them follow a different way and not Christ Jesus. The authority is Christ Jesus. It was never us, but they're changing that. And people believe it. Because when the activity stops, they say, oh, the demon's gone. No, that demon's not gone. It just goes dormant a little bit. So that everybody believes the demon is gone. And that person, whoever did that ceremony, is paraded as having his method work. And people start doing the method of that guy, not knowing these demons are hiding. They're not going anywhere. But then a day comes 
when things begin to manifest and all these people are going to find out they have been powerless and that the only thing they did was mark themselves for destruction because they believed a lie. See, the Lord said, God will send them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie, that they all might be damned who loved not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is everything God said was not right. If God didn't say it was right, then it's unrighteousness. And people have pleasure in unrighteousness. They love to come up with methods. They love rules. They love incantations, rituals, and rites. And they're practicing them all throughout the earth. And mankind is following all these things, believing that they're working, they're being seduced. Because they don't love the truth. You know what the truth is to me? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I love my Jesus. And I know he is the way, the truth. He is the truth. I know that there's no power in, in mankind. The power over darkness is bound within love. And God is love. And that is our Lord. Because everything has been given to Jesus. That power and authority given to Jesus. It is by his name these things flee. By his method. Not some method in the world. Not something man made up. I don't believe in any of that. All these concepts being rearranged is working on people like never before. And people actually fall hook, line, and sinker. That's why you have people, they, you know what they, you know what I've seen something else? There's a trend going up. People parade the sayings of men and they won't quote scripture, but they'll quote this guy and they'll quote that guy. They quote this guy. They read this guy's book, but this guy said this and this guy said that. I'm not talking about those in the world. I'm talking about those in the body of Christ. They quote men who they think are great in the world. I don't care who it is. That man is not the Lord. And that man's word is not above the Lord. This act of seduction is worldwide. To be free from it is to have it defeated in your life. And once it's gone, peace is bestowed upon you. An eternal peace that can never be broken by things of this earth. That seems almost impossible for many folk. But it seems like, how can that be? How can you have peace in a world like this? Or you can, where you will never ever complain again. But you'll be focused in the work of the Lord. The true Lord, not this false Christ that they're parading all over the earth. A false Christ to me is a false way of salvation, a different way of salvation. That's why one of the apostles said, if somebody presents to you any other gospel but the gospel we presented to you, don't fall for it. Because they knew that people would present another gospel, another way of salvation. We're talking about through Christ, but by the methods of men. Right down today, men have come up with a rule book to follow so that you may be forgiven by Christ. Do you understand that? In so doing, man, these people have set themselves up to have dominion over your belief in Christ. And indeed, the world feels up. They have changed so much. And Jesus said, watch out for those things. Yet people in this day and age, they parade them. I could point them out that will do no good. What will do the most good is that the truth of Christ be taught here, not the methods of men. As your eyes open, you'll find their ways have been established just about everywhere. But if you have Christ, you will not be discouraged, not one ounce. There's always hope in Christ, and we are victorious in the end. But this hour is not about being popular. It's about being real with the Lord, being true in your faith, and being free, finally. The only way that can happen is that all of what we do here is built upon Christ. For the purpose of Christ, to glorify Christ, that Christ may be established and glorified in the end. Any other reason will be serving the wrong side.